I love reading manga about dorky teenagers falling in love. I read the entirety of Aruharu Ride in only a few days and it is now one of my favourites, if not the favourite manga I've ever read. Shortly after that I read Strobe Edge, a manga by the same author as Aoharaido, attempting to quench my thirst for a story of equal magnitude. But I found Strobe Edge incredibly underwhelming and not nearly as enjoyable as Aoharaido. It's clear to me which one I liked better, but I asked myself why? What makes one a masterpiece and the other one something I had to force myself through? Why did two such similar works have such different effects on me? And why would I still prefer the one that unforgivably drags on longer than it should and has the most shameless conclusion? Let's check the script. Strobe Edge was made before Ao Haraido and it shows. It has some really unlikable characters and a plot that is hard to get behind. Kinoshita Ninako doesn't just have a weird name but also a motivation that is difficult to sympathize with. She falls in love with the super popular Ichinose Ren which is fair enough but he has a girlfriend and can't go out with her which is also fair enough but then Ninako keeps hanging out with him which is like not fair at all. The problem with Ninako is that she's a nice guy. She hangs around Ren after she's been rejected and although she says she expects nothing to happen, it's clear that something will. In Ninako's defense, she's a very innocent girl. She just wants to treasure her first love, but I can't agree with her actions. I get it, being in love is like that, but I don't understand why she keeps pining over someone she knows she can't have. It's disrespectful to Ren's girlfriend as well. I have little understanding for the two guys who fall in love with Ninako. She talks to Ren a handful of times and he adores her immediately, even though he doesn't realize it himself. Anjo Takumi, the real hero of the story, also falls in love with her just after one or two conversations. It's funny that such a deeply hurt character like him, who's turned to womanizing since his previous betrayal, would be so easily swayed by a random girl. I have a hard time rooting for Ninako. Style-wise, she's very small, like seriously, she looks like a child. Consequently, I can't take her serious as a love interest because she's simply too tiny. But my main issue is with her personality. She is bland and boring and she has no problematic traits. She's happy, cute and silly most of the time and I feel like she's too one-dimensional. I did appreciate her answer to Takumi at at the end where she admits to being afraid of being the bad guy by rejecting him. But it came in in like the second to last chapter and with no foreshadowing so it doesn't seem well reflected at all. I really like Ren's design, he's attractive but I struggle with grasping who he is. He doesn't want to break his promise to his girlfriend but it's hard to sympathize with someone who stays dishonest like that. Every now and then he does cute things like stop himself from smiling his death smile but often it's completely uncalled for and out of context. What surprised me the most is that his relationship with Takumi's ex-girlfriend is never even explained. Ren is someone who refuses to break up with someone he doesn't love anymore because he promised to be with them when he was like 15, but he can't once apologize to his friend for stealing said friend's girlfriend. I don't understand this character. Anzo Takumi is the best part of the story. Apart from falling in love too easily, his character is really well done. He has a touching backstory and motivations that make sense. He tries his best to get the girl he loves and fails miserably. He acts much nicer than Ren, although he can come on a bit too strongly. At the halfway point I was definitely rooting for Takumi to win the girl, but the mangaka is just too cruel to guys like him. Yes, it's very difficult to support Ninako and Ren as a couple. Their characters are weak and their situation makes it hard to ignore that inner voice that tells you how inappropriate they are being. I feel sorry for Ren's girlfriend, for Takumi and for all the other side characters who struggle with issues that feel a lot deeper and more relatable. The ending was cute and all but it didn't come with that feeling of satisfaction from 
from having journeyed with the characters. Oh, Haraido does a much better job at fleshing out its characters. The main couple, Yoshioka Futaba and Mabuchi Ko, are so two-sided that even they struggle to understand each other. And that's the draw of the series. Both of them have their own internal conflicts, struggling to stay true to themselves. Ko dealing with his mother's death is a very serious issue, and I like that it drives him to distance himself emotionally from everyone else. When he reunites with Futaba, he's reminded of the old, happier days of his past, which gradually brings his walls down. He doesn't want to get hurt again, but his heart is pulled forward, not just by Futaba, but his other friends as well. In a similar fashion, Futaba struggles with herself. She doesn't want to be shunned by other girls and puts on an act so no one will be jealous of her. But in doing that, she fails to make real friends. I love how the characters have other things to worry about than just each other. They both have things that are important to them, like Ko's grief or Futaba's fear of abandonment. I love that both of them spend time with their friends not just to talk about love, because that's what people do. Ko and Futaba have a chemistry you can feel from the page. They get on really well as friends and that's what I adore so much. There's not one single moment when they fall in love, it happens gradually as they get to know each other, much like it is in real life. Their story feels more natural and relatable because of how they fall in love without confessions and enforced drama. Holding of hands, hugs and even kisses happen not because they make it an appointment but because they feel like it. I like the introduction of a romantic rival, Kikuchi Toma, but I do think his arc drags on for way too long. I mean, he's a cute guy, but how on earth is he willing to stay with Futaba for so long? I hated this part of the series after a while, and I feel really sorry for him too. However, Toma's relationship with Futaba feels authentic. The part where she doesn't love him sets aside they act mature and communicate really well. I love a relationship where the parts involved are open and honest with each other. The subplots are cute too, but they never impose on the main story, which I felt happens a lot in Strobe Edge. Futaba and Ko are still the ones on our minds when we read of Murao and Tanaka-sensei. I don't hate Strobe Edge. At times it's even adorable, but its blatant innocence is a bit too naive for my taste. Ao Haraido is better because it's more genuine. I don't need a manga or anime to be real to enjoy it, but it's rare for a romance plot to feel so accurate and relatable, and that does not go unnoticed or unappreciated.